if you notice, every time we refresh the page, a, a new connection is established and therefore our user is given a new socket ID. And in Socket.io, you use this ID to send, um, to emit messages to other users. And so that's how we're going to be sending private messages over between users of our application. But if their Socket ID changes every time they refresh the page, it's going to be very difficult to make it so that a message stays with a certain ID and that that person, that the messages persist on their account. It's going to be a little bit more complicated to get that message over to them in real time if we would have to get their ID every time we send a message. So it's better that we just create a permanent ID for each user and using that ID, um, we'll be communicating between clients and so that's what we're going to do in this video. The first thing we've got to do is make change our database. So right now our database has a table called users and we just want to add another column here called user ID like that. And it can be a varchar and not null just like that. And obviously it has to be unique. Okay. So we can go in here into PSQL to Postgres and I'm going to connect to our WhatsApp database and I'm just going to drop the table called users and I'm literally just going to copy this in and make the whole table again like that and what happened okay yeah you can't have a comma at the last one so whenever our users create account, create an account, we're going to give them a unique ID that they can, that can be shared publicly between other users. So over here, well, in our uh, functions here, in our attempt to login and attempt to register, we're going to change some things here. But first of all, to get a unique ID, the first thing that we need to do is install a package. So I'm going to CD over to my server uh, project. And I'm just going to do yarn add UUID. And this is a library that lets us um, compute unique IDs. And they're random. And so here in this file, our auth controller, where we're making user accounts, we're just going to import that package. So const is equal to require UUID. And then we're going to destructure the import and get the V4 function out of it. And it's a best practice to rename it. I've seen all over documentation that we should be renaming this because V4 is kind of like a weird uh, name. And if someone would read our code and they just see V4, they'll be like, what? What is V4? So yeah, UUID V4 is a little bit more so unique user ID version 4. And so we're just going to change a little bit of this code. So when a user trying to log in here, we're getting the ID username, password, as well as the user ID of the uh, account that they're trying to log into. So we're selecting their user ID in this query and we're comparing the password. And if the password is the same, we're setting their session and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to uh, register, uh, we're going to save the user ID in the user's session. So like that. And just like that. And okay, that's good for our login. So now when the user's registering an account here, we're just checking if the username's taken. If it's not taken, we make an account. And here's the query to insert into a new account. So here we would want to insert into the user ID column um, a new value. And the value would just be whatever um, this function returns, which would be a unique ID. And then in the session, we want to save that. So new user query. And we want to return it from the query as well. So make sure we have access to that new um, new row and the new field that we just inserted. So like this, like that, okay? 
and so now we're saving the user's ID in a session in their session and in the database okay so we're all good there and now um, to get that to get that user ID from the user session into socket IO it's pretty easy so here you see we can just make a middleware to do that so I'm gonna go over here to our socket controller file and I'm gonna create a middleware called well it could be here in the authorized user one um, if the user is authorized then we can just do socket dot user is equal to socket dot request dot session dot user and destructure that oops and so yeah we're just copying everything from the users um, session into an object socket.user so then in socket.io all we got to do is uh, to access those values we just have to access socket.user so yeah and then we can just print out user ID and I'm just gonna do that like that like so okay and then let me just make sure this is all correct so in the auth controller we're saving the user id like that in the session request.session.user perfect and in here as well in here perfect okay so um let me refresh this page and i need to delete the cookies because i'm still logged in so i'm just going to create a new account and I'm gonna go over in Redis and I'm just gonna delete all the uh, values so then our session is completely destroyed. And so let's try to log in and it should give me an error. Yep, wrong, because there's no account. So let's create a new account. And let's go over here to our server and let's refresh and it's undefined okay and something's wrong here oh it's because i'm doing capital and it's lowercase i think yeah 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 okay so yeah see um we're getting a unique id on every connection so this is going to be this unique id is going to serve as like the room because every socket connection by default is in its own room and so we're just going to make users send events over to this id and then the user that has this ID will receive it and it will show on their screen and if they're not online, we'll just save it in Redis and when they're online, they'll get all the messages and the pending messages. And since now every user has a unique ID that ties to their account, we want to make it publicly available for all of our Socket.io clients. And for that, I'm going to use Redis. So in our authorized user middleware over here. I'm just going to import our Redis client. So const Redis, um, what did I name it? Yeah, Redis client is equal to require Redis. So here we're just going to do Redis client dot h set. And what this does is it basically goes into our Redis database and it sets or creates a hash map or a JavaScript object if you want to think of it like that and so the first argument it takes is the name of the hash map or basically the key so this could be anything you want but in this case we're going to do user ID colon and this is just a standard in Redis you would prepend it with a word or something that will identify its purpose so I'm going to change this to backticks so then we can do some spring string interpolation here. And so I'm just going to do socket dot user dot username. So the hash map is going to be called user ID colon and then the user's username. And then as a second argument, it takes in um, a field and a value. So you would basically put here a key to the object and then the second one, a value. And then you could do another key and another value and so forth is a pattern like that so as the first key i'm gonna put user id 
and as the value of that it's going to be socket.user.userid and here under connected i'll leave that for another video but yeah for now we're just storing the user's id in an object that is tied to their username so whenever you click on add friend you type in their username we're going to go in redis um, search this up so user id colon whatever and whatever username you typed and we're going to get their unique id and that's the the id we're going to use to uh, communicate between users so now let's save this file and i'm going to refresh here and make sure there's no errors and i'm going to go into our redis database and do keys star in here you see user id col uh, colon lester so let's do h get to get the whole hash map user id lester and it's actually h get all so here we get the whole hash map and here we see a value of use a field of user id and a value of the unique id so yeah that's how we make uh, persistent sessions with a user id that's publicly available